and welcome back to my channel. I'm Patty. I go by Patty Mac Makes Everywhere Online. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I made a really beautiful quilted envelope pillow. It's kind of a mouthful, uh, but it's so worthwhile. And here it is. Isn't that beautiful? So uh, what is an envelope pillow? An envelope pillow is a pillow that's like an envelope and you just slip in through this opening and inside you put a pillow form. So I have a pre-made pillow form that slips inside and you can change it out if you need to wash your pillow covering, you can do that. Um, if you wanna change it for the seasons or whatever, you can do that as well. It's actually a fairly simple process to put together an envelope pillow. It's essentially three pieces of fabric, three pieces. You have the front and then you have two on the back and that's what puts it together. Now in the case of this one, it's a little more complicated because I made my front as a mini quilt top. And I think it's a really fun project because you get to play with quilting and practice all of this quilt top part of it without having to commit to an entire huge project. So this is a really great way to play with blocks, to play with your quilting skills without the commitment. Because who doesn't want a little less commitment at this point, am I right? My quilt top is made using uh, four patch blocks and basically it's got four, four patches. And I've been working with you over this past month or so uh, with different aspects of working on and sewing four patch blocks. And essentially all of those technique tutorials lead up to this project. On this particular one, I had some fun with just sort of um, mimicking a little uh, free motion quilting. Uh, it's just sort of very free formed organic. I had a really good time with it on this other one. On this one, I used the same stitch, but I followed my uh, stitch line. So it's the same serpentine stitch, only uh, kind of straight and following this particular stitch. I will also share with you that this one I made using the um, all-purpose presser foot and this one I did using the walking foot and you definitely want to do the walking foot it's a much uh, smoother quilt top there's a little place on here that has a little bit of a pucker uh, and that is because I you know I didn't use the walking foot <laughs> so there you go but I wouldn't say that it is a, uh, a deal breaker I s still think it's a nice pillow and certainly the Two of them together are beautiful. I love them. Okay, so let's jump into today's project tutorial and uh, here we go. The tools that you will need to make today's pillow project are as follows. You will need a six by 24 inch quilting ruler. You will need a rotary cutter and a cutting mat. You will need an all purpose press your foot for your sewing machine. You're going to want a quarter inch foot or some way to really get your quarter inch seams just right for piecing the mini quilt top that is the starring feature of this pillow. And you should have a walking foot when it comes time to quilt that pillow top. You can do it with the all-purpose foot, uh, but it's not as nice of a result as you will get with the walking foot. You will also need to have, of course, a sewing machine and a thread of your choice to do the quilting and the sewing on the pillow. Also, you will want a steam iron with an ironing board and you will be using a seam gauge, scissors, and I highly recommend spray starch. Let's talk about what you will need to make the beautiful patchwork front that is the star of this pillow project. You're going to start with 16 5 inch squares. I wound up using charm squares that I had left over from my quilt project. You could use any charm pack that you want. 
You could also cut your own squares. The main thing is to start with the five inch squares. You're going to sew those into four separate four patch units. Once you have sewn your four patch units, you will trim each four patch block to an eight and a half inch square. You then combine those trimmed four patches into rows and then the rows together to make your mini quilt top. And the mini quilt top is the star of this beautiful project. And we will treat this mini quilt top just like we would a full sized quilt top. And you can see that I've taken great care to press all of the seams correctly and to make sure that all of those center points are very flat. That will give you your most beautiful finished quilt top. So when it comes time to put the quilt batting on and we do the actual quilting, we will have a really gorgeous, gorgeous finished project. And I think that even though this is a small project, taking our time and doing it right, that is the best way for you to learn your quilting skills and to turn out something that is just stunning. If you need a refresher or if you need a little extra information on how best to piece together this particular quilt top, I do have other videos. I will link to them below and I will make a playlist for this whole pillow project so that everything will be in one place for you. But if you're unsure on how to actually make this part of the project, I would strongly recommend that you start with how to make the four patch and just start there. That will walk you through on making the four patches. And then I have another video on how best to combine them. So review those videos if you need them. They'll walk you through the whole process of putting this together. And when you've got your little mini quilt top all ready to go, just meet us back here and I will show you the rest of the pieces you need to make this really beautiful pillow. Here is the rest of our material list. We will take that patchwork mini quilt top that we've sewn and we're going to make sure that it's trimmed to a finished size of 16 by 16 inches. We will then need two strips cut 16 inches by two and a half inches, two strips cut 20 by two and a half inches. We will then cut our backing fabric, which is in two different pieces. One will be cut 19 by 15 inches, the second one 19 by 12 inches. To finish up our supply list, we will want a pre-made pillow form in the size of 18 by 18 inches and quilt batting of your choice. In the picture, I'm showing cotton quilt batting, but what I used in these pillows and actually what I use in most of my smaller projects is fusible quilt batting, but you can use what you have on hand and what is easiest for you to obtain or use. Okay, <laughs> let's jump into making this pillow. When I make an envelope pillow, I like to start with the back pieces. We have two pieces for the back, and what we need to do is to sew hems so that we enclose the raw edges because we want a nice finished edge where we insert the pillow form. The longer edge is going to be where you want to work, so I first use the seam gauge and press in a one inch hem, and then I will take that raw edge and meet it to the halfway point and press that over. And I like to steam press that in, and it's a nice crisp edge. take that over to the sewing machine and I will stitch in a nice top stitch. 
You could use a decorative stitch here or you could use a straight stitch. I think it looks nice if you do a longer length. So I set my straight stitch to three and a half millimeters. Once you have the back panels hemmed, put them to the side. Now what we're going to do is work on the front panel. And the first thing to do is to piece the sides of the sashing. So you start with your sides, stitch those on using your sewing machine. You want to use your quarter inch foot to do this. And when you have the sides on, press the seams open. If you need to do any kind of trimming at this point to make sure that everything is perfectly square, go ahead and do that. Then we're going to put on the top and the bottom pieces. Again, right sides together, quarter inch seams, stitch that together. When it's all on, then same process of pressing the seams. Give your pillow top another nice little round of spray starch and press and now we're going to apply the quilt batting. I'm using a fusible quilt batting. I just find that easier for a small project like this. What I will do is lay the batting out on the cutting mat. I will put the finished pillow top on top of the batting and then just cut around the pillow top so that the batting matches the pillow top exactly. You then adhere the quilt batting according to your manufacturer's instructions. If you are not using fusible, you will want to make sure that you properly secure the batting to the quilt top. Once my quilt batting is secure to the pillow top, now it's the fun part. Now we get to do the actual quilting and you can do this however your heart desires. You could do stitch in the ditch. You could do any sort of design that you want to do. If you wanted to use decorative stitches around each of the stitch lines, you could do that. I'm going to put on the serpentine stitch and I'm going to just uh, kind of go everywhere. <laughs> I'm not going to follow any specific pattern. The only thing that I will be sure to do is to stay within the uh, confines of the sashing. So I'm going to go ahead and have a little fun with quilting this. Our quilt top is all quilted and now what I'm doing is I'm just squaring up everything. So I'm taking a half an inch off of each side and what I'm doing is with my quilting roller I'm using these lines to line up with this line here. So uh, I match here and then I uh, take just a half an inch off. and. I like doing this, you're, you're sewing a little big, you're losing a little bit of fabric, but what you wind up getting is a super square, um, basically quilt top for your pillow before you put it together. And it just makes a really beautiful finished project. And we just have those little edges off and now we have a beautiful squared up quilt top. Okay, so uh, here's a tip, you wanna make sure that you have the pillow facing the way that you want. Like I have directional prints, so like mostly you see it with the birds, the birds and the flowers, but even the flowers you could get away with it, but the birds are, oh, what a giveaway. So we wanna make sure that the birds are facing the way that we want them because we want the opening for our pillow form to be going horizontal. We go back to our uh, original pieces 
and I personally like the longer piece on top. So you can see this is right side up. Okay, and now you take your last piece and notice how the hem is facing this way. You want to make sure that your hems are crossing so the hems will be to the middle of the work. And see how you have this really nice overlap? That's what you want. If you don't have a good overlap, when you go to put your pillow in, it will bulge out. <laughs> I learned this the hard way. I'm going to mark my seam allowance. This this is completely uh, optional, but I'm going to do it so that I know that I stay on track and know that I have that half inch that I want. This way, all I have to do is follow that line with the walking foot and I know I have the seam allowance that I want. And I'm using that disappearing ink so it will just go away on its own. And because I do this on the cutting mat, I can line it up in the corner and find my half inch really easy. We've come to the end of our sewing and you have a couple of options here. Uh, so the easiest thing that you can do would be to uh, clip your corners. So just um, clip along here and take weight out of the corners so that your corners are nicer. Uh, but you're going to have these unfinished edges and uh, that can fray over time. So uh, one option is you could do zigzag or overcast stitching all the way around and that would um, help with the fraying and give you like a surged looking edge or you can use um, pinking shears which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to just um, narrowly trim all the way around and give this a nice pinked edge. I like that it's kind of a vintage finish and I personally like that look and the pinking uh, does help with the fraying so I'm going to just uh, trim using my um, pinking shears all the way around. So there's our nice little finished edge. I just think that if you're going to get out of the trouble to make something like this you may as well finish it off so it's nice inside as well. Okay let's uh, go ahead and turn this out and we'll put our pillow form in. So you're just going to reach in and just pull through. You do want to use a little bit of a point turner to get your uh, corners out. Just be really gentle about that. You don't want to poke a hole through your uh, <laughs> the corner of your pillow. Okay, I'm going to uh, give this one more good press and then we'll pop our pillow form in and we'll be done. Our pillow cover is all pressed out. It's absolutely beautiful. You will never regret <laughs> pressing your work. I can tell you that. So to put our pillow form in, we're going to open the envelope and we slip in. I hope that inspires you to give this pillow project a try. It's really fun and rewarding to make. I think it's a wonderful way to really work on your quilting skills without having to make something just ginormous. And even sometimes a table runner I feel like can be kind of a big project to make. This is literally 
like 20 by 20. It's much smaller. It will let you really work on piecing your blocks, getting your blocks really crisp and sharp and flat. All of the skills that you need to carry forward to be successful in any sort of quilting, you will get to work on that in the form of this smaller project. So uh, that's what I have for you. I sure hope that you enjoy this project. I love mine. I think they're beautiful. So that's it for today. Thanks for hanging out and I will see you in the next video.